um, happy Friday, if that's happening for you when you watch this later, I guess. <laughs> this is a uh, mobility class with instruments of torture, I suppose. So you will need for today a foam roller of any kind. It doesn't matter if they're ribbing on the top or not. Just a foam roller that you like. Um, and a massage ball of some kind. So if you have a tennis ball and that's all you have, fine. It's not great, it's too squishy, but it'll work for today. Um, my favorite is uh, this large dimpled kind of softball feeling thing. Um, it's made by Jugs, <laughs> I know. And you can find it on the Rogue Mobility site, R-O-G-U-E, Rogue Mobility, under all the mobility balls, or just online um, and search the, the Jugs ball. This is the large dimple ball. And the dimples, um, not only do they compress into you, but they kind of shear your muscle fibers a little bit. So it's great for working into those um, stuck places and getting some more circulation there. Probably what you have is a lacrosse ball, which if it was just one, it would look like that. Again, denser than a tennis ball, not gonna squish when you sit on it. Um, this is a peanut, so you've got two together. Um, honestly, my best bet to find these is in any TG Maxx store where they have that yoga standalone set up with all the, the yoga mats and things. If they're not out of them, uh, you could find it for about six bucks whereas online they're like $25 for some reason. So it's just two lacrosse balls stuck together. You can also do it at home if you have two lacrosse balls, just shove them in a tube sock and knot it real tight or duct, the, duct tape them together. It's a little tacky looking, but it works just fine. And what I like these for is a little dimple in the middle or at the divot, sorry. Um, your spine fits nice and neat in there. So you can roll these up and down your back and your spine won't get pressed on. You get the muscles on either side at the same time. You get up into your neck as well with this and it fits a lot of other places too. So definitely need a foam roller and then any kind of a massage ball, but I just wanted to showcase my two favorites for you. All right, so get comfortable in your rug. Get your pug if you have one. <laughs> He's just gonna take a nap with me out there. <clears throat> yeah, I know, but okay. Um, when you are rolling, the main thing you can do to make it a better experience for you, make it more effective, is to go slower. Um, you won't have time to feel the slightest change in muscles or a different direction of pressure if you're speeding along. Also, if you're buzzing along, it feels superficial, like you're just rubbing over the top layer of skin. You want to go slow enough to feel an anchoring pressure into deeper muscle layers and then roll it out almost like you are one of those giant machines that smooths out pavement in front of in front of you when you're resurfacing a road. So I'm going to show you from the side. We're going to start with the hamstrings here. So you're going to sit up here, <clears throat> straighten out your right leg, and just bend your left leg like a little kickstand. Another thing to think about in any foam rolling is the part of your body that you are rolling out, you want it to be as unhelpful as possible, as relaxed as possible. I often call them zombie legs because you just want to drag them along like they're dead. All right, so you can see if I sit kind of forward on my roller, I have my butt cheek on my roller here. If you start to roll the roller forward towards your foot ever so slowly and roll your booty back, you'll feel a point where your sits bone, it should feel like a bony thumb right underneath your butt cheek, is right on top of the roller. When you feel that, go really slowly so that right when you roll the sits bone off the back of the top of the roller and you roll the roller into the hamstring tendon, you're going to stay there. Almost like you're stretching the tendon away from that bony attachment. And then another thing to think about in any rolling is that if you can put more of your body weight on top of where you feel the pressure of the roller, you'll feel more pressure into that point. So the hamstrings are tricky because we're tight in our legs usually. So obviously the further you roll the roller towards your knee or ankle, the more you'd have to fold over it. Most of us can't do that. So I like to roll out the bottom part of the hamstring when you're sitting on a chair, which we could do at another time, but we're just going to get the top half pretty much today. So take it about an inch further, kind of sliding your booty back and the roller forward. Another idea of rolling is that you have to move your body to move the piece of equipment because it's stuck to the floor. It's not going to move on its own. 
So you go the opposite way you want the roller to go. And again, you're just going real slow, like a steamroller, waiting for the muscle to smoosh in front of you, rather than rolling over it like a speed bump because you went too fast. Use your hands wherever you need to. Really relax through the rolling out leg. Go another inch further, and remember you have to forward fold over it. You're getting a stretch too. I know rolling is hard because it is not comfortable and you're doing it at home and without someone to kind of coach you through it and to suggest little position changes here and there, it's easy to skim by things and not know if you're doing it right. And then also it doesn't feel good. So you're like, well, why would I do that if I don't know I'm doing it right and it hurts? I go one more inch. <clears throat> now we're gonna slide it back up to where we started. And let's aim for that sits bone, that bony thumb feeling thing at the bottom of your butt cheek to be right on top of the crest of the roller. So remember, we're going to slide very slowly the sit bone back so the roller is now pushing up just in front of that sits bone, anchoring the tendons of the hamstring right about there. And you're sitting right on top of that muscle, and I want you to lumber a little left and right with your chest. Your leg will move a little bit, but that's not the focus. You're moving your chest, and maybe your hips a little bit left to right real slow. And yes, we are doing this on purpose. <laughs> kind of strumming across that muscle. So if muscles are 3D and the muscle is running down your leg, when you roll side to side, you're trying to get the uh, edge, the curved edge of the muscle. And also just to remind it to be free of its neighboring muscle. You also will feel a different pressure coming from a different angle sometimes. So come back to the middle, roll another inch down the leg, get heavy, and then real slow, take your chest a little bit left. Your foot might roll with you just a little bit. But remember, this leg is inactive, so we're not waving around with the foot. Roll a little bit to the right. You might feel a little nervy. And then back to center. Let's go one more time, so down another inch. Heaviness, and then a little bit left to right. If you have a dog that's not half cat, like mine is, you may have an issue with leaving your massage balls out and then getting chewed up. So uh, do your best. <laughs> Anytime you get on the ground, I think it's an open invitation for the dogs to get involved. All right, roll it back up. Ooh, yeah. So we've just run down the, the middle strip, really, of the back of the leg. There is like the inside and the outside strip to do. We're just going to go in basics today, I bet. So you're going to turn <clears throat> the leg. See how my toes are facing straight up? You're going to turn so the toes face forward. And there's going to be a large bony section here you'll probably go right onto, and that's not going to feel comfortable. So roll your roller above it, meaning your roller towards your hips a little bit more. And you might feel like you're falling off, so lean back into your arm here. Now, depending on where the knee and the toes face, you're going to be on different muscles here. So your free foot can be behind you. For starters, we're going to roll back into your glutes. So again, not fast, not superficial. You want a heaviness here to anchor into those deeper muscles. And here, you're also, with the roller, push, pushing the muscle into the deeper bone. So it's almost like you're smooshing onto it from two different directions. Now, if you have a short roller like mine, you want to be careful that you don't roll off the back of it, of course. But if you have it just so, you can even hold on here, you're going to roll back and feel the edge of the roller kind of kick into your glutes a little bit, which is nice. <clears throat> Remember to breathe, by the way. <laughs> Rolling is also hard because you've got to do a lot of upper body work and kind of side plank along. So I know this is no one's cup of tea, but it feels really good after. All right, now we're going to take our back leg in front. And this is just like basic foam rolling today. Hold on to your ball and twist your hips. So you're stacking right on top of that roller. And your underside leg is more or less facing out and not up anymore. I'm going to roll down so I don't hit my head. And if you are 
truly stacked in those hips, you're going to feel an outside hip flexor called your TFL, tensor fascia lata, not latte, tensor fascia lata. And imagine it is like a thick rope and it attaches to the top of your hip bone and that bony point you felt first called your greater trochanter. It's like the elbow of the leg bone. What we want to do here is ever so slowly rock the hips toward the floor and then back toward facing forward. And you might have to slide a little up or a little down each time you try that. You'll know when you hit it. And if you're on your tighter side, you'll feel it a lot more obviously than you will on the other side. So keep going. I'm just going to show you one thing as you go. <clears throat> so I'm going to attach to the top of your hip bone here and the outside of that greater trochanter. So you've got about a six inch span. If you have a pant seam there, which I do, it runs straight down that line and it's a thick rope. So it's really easy to fall off it because it's circular and wants to kick you off it anyway. <clears throat> the roller should fit nicely into that little concave spot there. So, so we're twisting the hips a little up and a little down, really trying to stack the weight of the hips onto that muscle. You can slide up and down a little bit to see if you're missing this spot. And as you do that, I'll say too, what I see mostly is people who are like, roll up and down their IT band, like la 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 la, and they'll hit that greater trochanter and they think that it's saying stop. I know that it doesn't feel fun to roll over it, so lighten up over the bone, but keep going if you're rolling out at home. Please don't just stop at that leg bone and think that you don't have anything above it that's worth rolling. All right, I know this is a little bit of torture. People's TFLs are really gnarly. So your leg is in front of you. I'm gonna roll toward the floor a little bit more. And then a little bit up. Don't run into the hip bone, that's too far. And a little down. All right, now we're gonna go down the length of the IT band. So you wanna slide the roller towards your foot and you'll feel that greater trochanter, the outside of the leg bone there. So move it down <clears throat> and get comfortable, <laughs> as comfortable as you can. We are going to pull with our arms and with this leg, pull the body toward your head. And remember, you're just dragging that leg like it's a zombie leg. Up and down, and this is pretty much as slow as it goes. <clears throat> and you want to think about being right on that outside stripe or seam of the pant there. If you want to go further, hop up onto your hands, walk that leg with you, and keep going. And if you feel movement, <laughs> don't be creeped out. That's the lateral quad, your outside quad. The quads are the front muscle there. Kind of remembering that they shouldn't be attached to the IT band and kind of lifting up. <clears throat> In cyclists, if you've ever seen a professional cyclist with some really hefty leg muscles, it's called a cut. That indentation that the IT band makes in the leg where their quad muscles kind of ripple over it actually an admirable quality in the cycling world to have a defined cut but us massage therapists know that it means that you have a lot of adhesions of your quad muscle to your IT band so there's a world in which you would learn how to roll into that cut to help lift the quad up but we're just gonna stick with some basic up and down rolling today and again, try not to roll over muscles too fast, like they're a speed bump, like you just hit them. You want to think about being a steamroller and waiting for them to melt in front of you. Now, we've been stacking the hips and rolling down the outside seam, that IT band. This time, we are going to, I'll show you again. If I was rolling down here, now I want to roll down this outside strip of the quad. So not right on top, but divide your quad into segments, this top, middle, this inside one and this outside one versus right on the outside. Now we want to shift to that quad. So <clears throat> if you were stacked, you're just going to turn, lift, and set on the muscular section of your leg rather than the IT band and keep going. 
and quads can be pretty angry. Let's give it some time. You can push into your hands a little bit to lighten up the pressure. And you're just ironing down that outside strip of the quad. How you doing? Breathing? Shoulders are down? Self-inflicted pain, huh? You got a pug on one end and a table on the other. And you might find spots where it's worse than others, higher, lower. So sometimes foam rolling is an information gathering session when you're seeing if you have any secret places that are angrier than you thought they were. Okay, come on to your hands and knees. Now we want to go down this smack dab middle section of the quad. So <clears throat> depending on how your body works, you can act like you're crawling under some barbed wire or something, or you can come up a little higher here, up to you. We are gonna drag your body forward to roll the roller down toward the knee. Keep this leg heavy behind you. And come down. So remember, you move your body in the opposite direction you want the roller to go. And it's okay to roll that roller all the way up under the hip bone. You're gonna get your hip flexors here, just like you felt that very top of the hamstring, the tendons there. On the front in the quads, it'll feel a lot more dense and ropey. So one more time, drag it forward real slow. If you find a good spot, just stay there. switch you can see me change from the front here so I'm staying in this position and I'll see you in this position in a second to get the inside of the quad and the inner thigh my favorite change up is this so I'm here and I have a bent leg that's not getting massaged and a straight leg behind me I'm just gonna switch those so I slide the roller about three quarters of the way up I would turn toward the roller, bending the leg on the roller and straightening out the leg that's not getting rolled. Make sense? So now you've got a bent leg over the roller, which will look like this. Kind of a half frog here. And then we are going to drag ourselves to the side. And again, it's okay to get that roller pretty high. You'll kind of bump into a hip bone at some point. You might feel that inside quad lifting up away from the inner thighs. A lot of people don't roll their inner thighs, but if you think about your legs as having a few different compartments, inside, top, outside, back, why would you ignore one of them, even though it's hard to get to? And perhaps more painful. All right, come on up. And straighten that leg out in front of you. So again, that's just basic rolling, kind of thinking of strips, of the legs, rolling up and down them, not too fancy. So we're gonna do the second side now. So, <clears throat> left leg, hop on top, and we wanna start the roller kind of back toward our butt. Remember, you're thinking about your sit bone being kind of a thumb, bony thumb underneath the bottom of your butt cheek. Here I'm on my butt cheek a little bit more if I roll backward. I feel my sit bone get to the top crest of the roller right about here. Like it's right underneath me. And if this is my sit bone, I want to roll back slowly until it's just on the back side of that roller. And I feel my tendons getting smushed and stretched. Okay. One hamstring is a lot tighter than another. We're 
one set of hamstrings. So just notice as you start to forward fold where that tension is coming from. And I am starting with the hips again today. We did a stretching class last week, focusing on the hips, because I feel like during quarantine, everyone's been sitting a lot more. If you've been furloughed, you've just been sitting, maybe doing not much of anything or uh, knitting a whole lot like me. And if you've been working from home and didn't used to before, you might not have set up your office properly and have been working in an awkward situation. But a lot of people have been sitting a lot more than normal, maybe in a bad position, and then maybe just don't have any access to anything for workouts besides walking. So a lot tighter hips and legs, and those are gonna pull into your back in time. So keep going about an inch at a time, one more inch and then heaviness. Just keep moving your hands and that kickstand foot as you need to. Another inch, giving it time to roll in front of you or melt underneath you. Let's go one more inch. And you'll feel different types of sensations. So see how I'm kind of approaching the middle of my hamstring here with the belly of my muscle versus the top and the tendon or the bottom and tendons again. All right, we're gonna roll that back up to where we started. Try to find that point again where your sit bone is right on top of the roller or thereabouts. I'm gonna roll the sit bone off the back just a little bit. So you roll into the tendons here and then just stay there. Fold a little forward. I'm gonna take our body a little left to right. Now I'm gonna show you this from the front view this time. So if you imagine a hamstring tendon, hamstring muscle as like a pretty big squishy, ropey situation. And it's 3D, right? So I'm gonna be here in the middle and then rock a little bit to the side. So the angle of my weight is coming to the outside edge of that muscle right here. And if I rock inside, my weight's coming diagonally into the inside edge of that muscle. So you're kind of strumming over it to tell it to literally release from its other neighboring muscles. So let's go one more inch further and get heavy and then rock back and forth and you'll just snip the thread away which leg is tighter <clears throat> again there's heaviness while you're doing this it's not just a superficial rubbing so if you had pants on you'd feel them rubbing back and forth maybe we don't want that anchor deep and move the skin with you don't rub over skin one more time center roll up one inch further get heavy on top of it and then rock your whole body left to right. Now we do this technique other places in the body. It's just easier to feel and do here on the hamstrings. Honestly, you need to develop a little bit of um, pain management <laughs> to be able to do it on the IT band. All right, we're gonna rock on up. <clears throat> and now we'll go to the outside strip of the leg. So. Stack your hips on top of the roller. Remember, if you're on the greater trochanter, it's gonna feel like you're just on a bony, a speed bump. So let's go on top of it. And the roller is gonna fit nicely between the top of the hip and that leg bone. So remember, we are rocking the hips back for glutes first with our free leg behind us so we don't fall off the, the uh, thumb roller. Use the back edge of that roller if you want to, to kind of push into some glute muscles, just don't fall off. Then you can roll up and down a little bit here too if you don't quite find a good spot. So basically a few ways to foam roll. Just sit on top of a spot, hold. Roll up and down slowly. Stay in one spot, strum left to right or roll back into a spot and then go up and down, roll forward into a spot and then go up and down. You can blend those techniques together. And often just a subtle change in positioning or the direction you're coming at something will give you a whole new spot to work on. So rocked back, try sliding your feet away from you, the roller up into your hips a little bit. 
All right, and then working forward to that TFL again. So you're gonna stack your hips. Maybe bring that free leg in front of you. Let yourself tip the hips forward toward the floor. And back and forth just a little bit. Now this is my tighter side, so I feel it right away. I don't know if you're comparing or can remember the other side. <clears throat> again, if you can't quite feel it, feel free to go up or down an inch. Try again. And just know that especially in this area, it's so easy to skim past something because you're going too quickly or for it to just bounce you off of it completely because it is ropey. <laughs> then act like you're going to roll over it, but stop just before you do. All right, we're going on to the quad. So lift up and turn that back knee to the ground. And you want to think about being on the top center strip of the quad. So do whatever you need to with this free leg so it's out of the way but can drag you along. Hi, bud. <clears throat> and start to crawl real slow away and let the roller roll down towards your knee. And sometimes it's nice to have your teacher show you a move on the reformer or show you how to do your foam rolling because you see exactly the pace. And the pace will change a lot about how it feels. I know that sounds obvious, but it's hard to know exactly how slow to go unless someone shows you. Now we're not gonna roll side to side on the quad, obviously. It's just a little more intense here and we're just trying to get everything covered with the basics today. So try to stay right on top of that quad. Also rolling on the quad is surprising and really painful. Look like I'm crawling out the door here. It's okay to roll almost right to that kneecap too. Just not over it, of course. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna get the inner thighs again. So you're gonna roll towards your reformer. I'm gonna show you again from this direction. Or your reformer, excuse me, your foam roller. You see, I've been teaching a lot this week. <laughs> All right, your body's walking in the direction of the roller. So the roller's on my left leg. So I'm gonna roll the roller a few inches away from my hip bone here. I don't wanna be too high because I'll get stuck. Walk yourself that way, and as you do, switch the legs. So I've got two bent legs for a second, almost like a little frog. Keep going, and then straighten out your new back leg. All right, and then roll yourself side to side. And I'm gonna turn to face you. So hopefully you're taking note as to which leg is tighter and then where in which leg is tighter. Front, back, inside, back, outside. The other thing to think about, and this is just a preview of where we're going next, is your foam roller is more of a diffusive pressure. So it's bigger, broader. In massage terms, that would be like when your therapist uses their forearm rather than their thumb. So you might want to start, especially a tender area, with a foam roller rather than a massage ball. Because if you go like too fast, too deep, too hard kind of thing, your body will just react against that and maybe brace, stiffen, tighten, um, kind of freak out. So you won't get much benefit from that, of course, if you're tensing to protect yourself from what you're doing to yourself which is another reason to stay relaxed and breathe throughout this whole process, but also maybe to be more intelligent when you're choosing your massage tool, especially with what you're starting with. So if you know you need to get really deep into some areas, maybe use your roller first and then go in later with your massage ball. Yeah. So this lets the pressure spread out in a larger area. It's also nice because if you don't have much time, you can get a lot covered with one tool. So in your mind equate the roller to more of a forearm and a ball to more of a thumb or an elbow even. All right, roll off that. And again, 
we didn't cover everything, but it's a pretty good, basic, quick, broad rolling of the leg. Uh, <clears throat> calves are kind of hard to get. Like some people like to do this number. I find that honestly silly and maybe a little obnoxious. It's like, what are you really gonna do? And then you're just like sitting there kind of pawing the thing. Um, if that gives you enough pressure, by all means do it. What I like better is this peanut. You can try one lacrosse ball. Honestly, it's gonna like fly out from your calves. So I like the peanut. Also the peanut gives you a lot of pressure into different um, sections of your calf. So I'll just show you this really quickly because I don't assume that you have one at home right now. But if you were to go get one and try this later, you're gonna come up onto your knees and put the peanut crosswise, perpendicular on your calf. And then just use your hands for support, sit back into it. Now you're putting as much weight in your hands as you want to take weight out of the pressure of your legs because this can be pretty intense. You can also you can hold for as long as you like, but you can situate it a little bit more to the left or right of your calf rather than right in the middle for different points. Or when you get into it, you can shimmy that little upper body lean again a little bit left to right, but please go really slowly. And this can go all the way down there. Yeah. So that's my favorite tool, my favorite technique for calves. Um, for feet, I like a golf ball. <clears throat> So you can take for your glutes, which we're getting into next, your lacrosse ball, your peanut, a bigger, more soft ball-like massage ball, and sit it underneath one butt cheek. So a lot of people like to do that and then cross the ankle over the knee. Up to you whether you do that or not, but try and aim for the smack dab middle of your butt cheek. Yeah? And try and put the ball right there. So either you have a straight relaxed leg in front of you of the glute you're rolling and the kickstand leg here, or if you can handle the pressure, you're going to cross that ankle over the knee. And that might just expose a different angle to a different muscle. There's just two different options. Again, what you wanna do is, as you roll slowly up, down, or left to right, put as much weight in your arms as you need to to take the pressure off the ball which is going to be a significant amount anyway. And some people can't do this with their legs, so that wouldn't be an option for you. So you'll just go back to straight. We're kind of half bent here. And you're rolling the ball kind of like up and down, right over the major like midsection point of your glutes. <clears throat> Now you can lean a little further back or drop down to your elbows to get that ball a little higher. And also start getting into the, the middle glute, the med gluteus medius. You can also sit up, start to sit more on top of it to get that more toward the bottom of the glute and the hamstring. So you can go full coverage if you want to, but that gets a little tricky and people tend to fall off their ball. So again, if you're limited on time and you wanna just hit your major spots, which is more about what this class is for, you'll just aim that for the middle and roll just two, three inches up and down over that middle spot of your glutes. Okay, so we'll switch sides. <clears throat> Hi, bud. He's here for the glutes. <laughs> so it worked the same way if you just had the one lacrosse ball. If you have the bigger ball, it's gonna be a little bit more intense here. Relax, straighten, mostly straighten your leg. And you're pushing into your kickstand foot leaning into your arms and just rolling a few inches up and down over that medium, middle, major center point of the glutes. So speed is everything here. If you just rolled really quickly back and forth, that's just gonna feel like a lot of pain and also not do much for you. Plus you're gonna skim over some interesting points. So go real slow. You can always stop if you find something good. It's like a treasure hunt. 
you also want to think again, I mentioned this earlier, but think about pressing the muscle against the attaching bone. A little sandwich idea here. So you have the bone pushing back against the muscle and you're pinching it from both sides. And especially for deep muscles, um, thick muscles like the glute area, you can't physically touch um, the deeper muscles, the ones that live under the top muscles. You can't ever touch them directly. So you're sending pressure down through the top muscles, yes, but you want to think about pushing them into the bottom bone for some help there. And again, you can kind of sit up a little higher and roll into the deeper glutes, the bottom glutes, more of that hamstring attachment area, or lean back a little bit Almost like you're coming up and around underneath that back hip bone. We're approaching that side area we were just at. So feel free to be creative. But a lot of muscles attach or run through that middle point. So it's a good spot to hit. All right. Now I like to, if you roll out a major section, a major body part, a major area, give that a little stretch afterwards. Um, you're getting blood flow to the area, you're getting some pressure, you are manually lengthening that steamrolling idea again, the muscles. So it's nice if you have the time to roll a little bit first and then stretch. So we're not going to do that right here, but on your own, you know what to do. Um, if you have the peanut, it's nice to do this with the peanut after the roller or in lieu of the roller if you want to just get straight to it. But since most people have a roller for this class, we're going to go straight into your back. <clears throat> now, my waistband's a little bit low today, but my belly line is here, right? <clears throat> and then you can feel the tops of the hip bones are here. The hip bones come pretty high up. Most people don't really realize that they're that high up, but they are. And you actually have a nice layer of glute right there, just literally right under the hip bone there. And then you have your sacrum here. So it's nice to roll that too before you get into your low back. And I'm gonna be dragging my head that way. So we'll see. <clears throat> so come on up. And then roll onto the top of the hips there. So you're actually on hip bone here. And this is where in last week's class we positioned the roller to tuck the tailbone under and lengthen out one leg so we can stretch the hip flexor but hold the tailbone in a tuck. So if you just rolled out your quads, this might be a nice stretch to go into before you get into your back here. Again, straight leg, heavy leg. It's in extension because the foot's behind the hip, hopefully, and the tailbone is tucked, which is important if you want to stretch hip flexors. So maybe give that a little run through. But when you're on your sacrum, you can bend the knees into your chest and then drop to the floor to roll the roller up and down just a little bit. Or feet on the ground, use your hands, use your legs, start to pull yourself towards your feet. Again, just an inch at a time. Now, I've heard some people say, don't ever roll your lower back. Um, if our back was that sensitive, We'd probably be wearing body armor to prevent anything bad from happening if you pressed on your lower back. Your kidneys are underneath a lot of things there. They're not right at the skin. If you have a disc issue, you might want to skip it. Um, generally, my students with disc issues know how to protect themselves by this point. But I have found the people who freak out about rolling the low back um, don't have an answer when I say, well, are you not supposed to massage your low back then? So I'm not really sure where they're coming from with that. And, and to this date, no one's given me a good answer um, if they hold that opinion. I'm willing to hear it, I just don't know. So my opinion is it's fair game. And also, if you place the roller there, right behind your waistband or belly, not the hips anymore, right under the belly, you get a nice stretch here. Most of us slouch way too much. <clears throat> and now it's important to know what you're after with different positions of the roller. So I put it right under my belly to open my low back on purpose. I'm not getting a hip flexor stretch right now, probably. 
Um, but this is designed for the anti-slouch. So people who round their low backs and just sink down into themselves and slouch or sit in rounded chairs or couches all the time, this would be a nice place to stop for you. Remember, stay there. But when I was back under my hips or under my sacrum, that was designed to target the front of the hips. So see a really different look to that. And here I'm tucked under. And here I am tilting the hips up. So if you are at the waistband, but think you're stretching the hip flexors, you won't be. So just know where you are and what you're after. All right, then you can keep rolling. Again, drag with your feet, push with your hands. A few inches at a time, real slow. And you'll have to keep resetting your feet. Your head can be on the ground. It'll start to lift at some point. I like to hold the back of my head just because that's me. And then you have options to lift the hips when you get into the mid-back or drop the hips. And it's nice to kind of round your back as you drop your hips and arch your back a little bit as you lift the hips. Now make sure you don't fall backwards onto your head. You know where it's going. You can also just lean back and drop the hips. So there's no wrong way to do this. And you might want to toggle between ideas of using this as a rolling massage pressure or as just a straight up yoga bolster, opening your chest. So depending on where you want to open your spine, you'll line up that roller right behind it. And you can stay here for as long as you like, within reason. I like to support my head. So if you're hanging back here, that's not gonna look very comfortable, right? So either hold on to your head or grab a pillow if you intend to stay for a while. Now, if you can come up a little bit and round your chest, you wanna think about the roller being more or less behind your bra strap, maybe a little lower. You're gonna twist to one side a little bit, almost like an ab curl. And just try and push that roller into the shoulder blade a little bit. So it's a little bit of a twist. You can extend over it and roll up and tuck a little bit, but you're more on the right strip of your back, less in the mid center there. And the left too. So twist a little bit to the left. You're feeling that pressure come into that strip between your shoulder blade and spine arch over it, same way as before, and round up into it as you roll back. All right, then go back to center. And you'll notice, we mentioned this before, the more body weight you have over the thing you're rolling on, the deeper the pressure is gonna be. So when I start rolling up into my neck, there's nothing left, there's no pressure really. It might feel nice to drape over your roller, arms out is easier, arms up is harder. Um, and that's different, but you're gonna feel Less pressure probably when you get to your mid upper back, and definitely when you get toward your neck, which is where your peanut comes in again. So assuming you had one, I'll just show you real quickly in case you do get one. Remember the little divot here lines up with your spine, so you want to be really careful about placement here and not put the spine on top of one of the balls. <clears throat> If you were to roll up and down like before, like we did on the roller with the peanut, it's exactly the same, except remember, this is more like a thumb pressure or an elbow pressure than a more diffuse forearm pressure. So I'm gonna go, and the foam roller and especially the balls will take your shirts with you and pull your ponytail under. So just tuck everything in. <laughs> I'm gonna go a little quicker just to get to the top and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so there's no loss of pressure here when you're between the shoulder blades, which is really nice. But when you get a little higher, the very um, tops of the shoulder blades into the upper traps, you'll feel like you're losing it. Then you want to carefully put your feet on the ground and bridge up. And that will get you that pressure back in the ball. I like to lower the hips, then move a little higher, and then bridge up again. Now, depending on how comfortable you are with this or how stable you are, you can put it under the base of the skull and bridge just a little bit and pull with your feet to get that pressure to push up into your skull. Now this tends to slip around a little bit, so it's not perfect, but it is something. <clears throat> okay. Another thing to do if you have one lacrosse ball or the peanut 
is to, if you're lying on your back, put the peanut between your spine and your shoulder blades, so right in that meaty lane there, vertical, and then roll your body side to side, which is going to push into that edge of the shoulder blade, which is really nice. <clears throat> Something the film roller doesn't quite get you. Um, let's do one more thing. Rolling out your arms, forearms, shoulders themselves, shoulder blades, pecs, neck is a little bit more tricky. So I'm just trying to stick with the basic broad strokes today again. Remember you had your calves and your feet. Um, but a lot of people forget their lats and their sides. So foam roller is a probably a more gentle tool for that. You can definitely use your peanut, but it gets a little intense. So you're going to place the foam roller when you lie down right at your bra strap, right on the sides. So you're not rolled back yet, you're not twisted toward the floor yet, you're just leaning on your side. And this is hard because you have to stay enough relaxed to get the pressure, but you have to use both hands here. <clears throat> so do whatever you want to with your legs, bend them, straighten them up to you. You're going to crawl back towards your feet to roll the roller up toward this extended hand and a half inch at a time goes a long way. It's almost like you're going one rib at a time. And maybe if you could feel this out, think of sinking the roller in between each rib. Just if, it, if you are already feeling, oh, there's a rib, there's a rib. <clears throat> now, when you start to feel more of a uh, squishy, <laughs> Uh, lat muscle happen. So right now you're mostly on rib muscle here. When you start to, um, and my cue for that is the bottom tip of the shoulder blades, you start to touch the back of your roller here. When you start to feel like there's this big squishy muscle that you could grab back here, then, then you'll get on top of that just a little bit more and roll your chest gently forward toward the ground. Now you might actually feel a little bit of a pec massage here, which is fine. And then carefully roll so that you're stacked and facing out again. And then carefully roll back just a little bit. And it's going to almost feel like you're strumming over the back edge of your lat again. So if you don't feel the pressure, slide down an inch. Try it again. Roll down. You might feel some pec. Probably. It's just a bonus there. And then stack and gently roll back. So if you roll back too far, the lat will slip underneath you. All right, then stack yourself. You could go over and over that, but stack yourself and drag a little bit more into the armpit. And then you are gonna roll back just a smidge again into that back delt. And forward a little bit. You'll feel maybe some triceps, maybe pecs. Probably not the front delt, but maybe. Yeah? I know it's a crazy feeling, but if you think about your armpit, what is it except negative space created by like literally two flaps of muscle that you can latch onto here. So you got your pecs and everything else, your lats, rotator cuff and everything else. Yeah? So negative space, two flaps of muscle and a deltoid cuff on top. Let's do that second side. <clears throat> so again, you're gonna start, if I were sitting up and here is my bra strap, and put the foam roller right at it and lay down. Honestly, draping over it like so and taking the arm with you is a really nice stretch. So if that's all you've got in you, if the pressure and when moving the roller is too much, just lean over it and stretch. You're gonna crawl yourself a little bit up. You're trying to listen for when you connect to that big back slab of lat. And then rock back and forward. You also might be feeling your serratus anterior in the front, like right in, in front of the lats, kind of right behind or under your boobs there. So you might need to like lift your boobs out of the way. <laughs> Depending. Um, the serratus anterior muscles, if you can envision Batman in his costume with that nice like zigzag through the front, 
it's called a serratus because it is serrated and anterior because it's in the front. You also have a section in the back there. It's really important for shoulder blade stability, breathing. Other things too. So you rocked back and forth a little bit, either right at that bra line or just a little bit above. You're gonna center and stack and roll a little higher, maybe into your armpit, heavy arm and then roll a little forward, maybe getting into some pecs, maybe not, probably. And roll back, kind of pushing with this hand. One more. All right, come on up. So basic, basic foam rolling, some major spots, definitely not everything. And we did skim, so you could just do all of those techniques over and over for as long as you want to, or just focus on one body part here. Um, you could definitely target just on the feet, just on the lats, just on the shoulders. You can do ab foam rolling, not with a foam roller, of course, but with a, with a ball. There's lots of things to get into, but um, please be careful. If you don't know anatomy very well, just err on the side of caution, only do what you've been shown. If something feels weird, stop right away. If you're losing um, feeling, if you're getting a little bit uh, asleep, stop right away, you're on a nerve, but um, common sense should go a long way for this. So I hope this helps. If you have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to explain, happy to send you a little video of something more specific, um, but I hope this makes you feel better. Give a little stretch after you foam rolled and you've done it. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.